Hello guys, today we are going to discuss recurrent neural network for sequence labeling. In the last class we have discussed how to design a recurrent neural network for sequence classifications. We have, uh, we have also discussed the sixth jar of machine learning that is data, task, model, learning algorithm, loss function and evaluations for the sequence classifications. We have also discussed how to pre-process the, the data for the sequence classifications. Now today we are going to discuss how to design a recurrent neural network for sequence labeling. In sequence labeling we have n output for the n input. So we can say we have one output for the one input. Whereas in the case of sequence classification we have one output for the n input. So the major difference in sequence labeling in sequence classification is that in sequence labeling we have n input and n output whereas in sequence classification we have n input and one output. For example part of speech tagging. In part of speech tagging our input is our sentence of, uh, of n word and the, and the output is also having the n words. So a task is to identify whether, uh, whether d is a verb, noun, adjective, determinant, whether the first is a noun, verb, adjective and so on. In the case of name entity recognition, your input is, is a word, is a, uh, is a sentence of n word and as your task is to identify the name like Mohan is going to the market. So Mohan is a name and market is a name and rest of the uh, rest of the words are not named. Okay. So now let's discuss the sixth jar for the sequence labeling. So before discussing the sixth jar, first we need to understand the what is the difference in terms of data, in terms of input data for the sequence labeling and sequence classification. So as we all know, in all machine learning algorithm, all the input data is, uh, is divided into the two matrix. One is input matrix, second one is your target matrix. So let's discuss the difference between the input matrix and target matrix in sequence labeling and sequence classifications. As we have already seen in last video, the size of your input matrix is n cross m, where n is the number of sentence and m is the number of features. Whereas the size of your target matrix is n cross 1. So we can say it is a vectors of n cross 1 size where n is the uh, number of uh, number of sentence and uh, m uh, and 1 is uh, and we are having the one output for for each sentence. So the size of the target vector is n cross 1. Now in the case of sequence labeling there is no changes in input matrix but we have some but there is some changes in in terms of target matrix because we have one output for one input so let's discuss how to con how to preprocess uh, the uh, the data in sequence labeling so <clears throat> as we have already uh, already discussed how to preprocess the uh, the input matrix in sequence classifications. So the math process is same. First we need to uh, convert, uh, we need to find the maximum length of the sentence. So suppose is the, uh, is the maximum length of sentence is 8. We add the SOS the start of sentence at the starting of the sentence and end of the sentence at the end of the sentence. So the length of 8 plus 2 equals to 10. So uh, the we convert the all sentence of same length. So, if the sentence ki length is 10, then the sentence ko humne kisme convert kiya tha? 10 length is input sentence. Mein. Then we identify the number of unique words. So, we identify the number of unique words. Ko identify kiya tha. So, in the last example, the number of unique words was 24. Then, we identify the number of each words ko humne kya unique id ki thi so same process is repeating here so if the length of the if the maximum length of the sentence is 10 then here is also the maximum length of the sentence is also 10 so length of this vectors and sorry uh, length of this matrix and this matrix will be 
same. Then we identify the number of unique words. Here we identify the number of classes. Suppose if the number of classes is 8, after adding SOS and US, number, number, of, number of classes will be 10. Then we will add the padding. So, so process is same, but the difference is here we are uh, we, we, uh, we identify the number of unique words. Here we count the number of classes. For example, in the case of word, we have only maximum, we have maximum 26 word. So the, num the number of classes will be 28, 26 plus 2 equals to 28. Okay. So, uh, so now this uh, in the we have already seen this example in the last video also. So the your SOS is a first number, US is a second number, and padding is a third number. Then each unique word getting the unique numbers. So jitne bhi jaha par bhi da aega, we will replace all the the by the number four. All first will be replaced by the by the number five. Now same process is repeating here also. SOS is given by one number, US is two, padding is three, determinant is four, adjective is five, noun is six, verb is seven and so on. So here the maximum number of unique words 24. So the length of the input vector hoga, how much 24. Only one bit jo hogi, wo kaisi hogi aapki? One hogi, rest of the bits kaisi hongi aapki? Zero hongi. That we have already seen in last video also. So, yes, ka, is ka fourth number ki jo bit hogi, wo kya hogi aapki? One. Rest jo bits hongi, wo kya hongi aapki? Zero. Yaha par fifth number ki bit kya hogi aapki? One. Rest of the bits kitni hongi aapki? Zero. So, here, suppose that we have ten classes. Thik hai? So, ten classes hain. So, first, two, second, third. And determinant ko humne konsi de di? Fourth classes. So, cable 4 entry will be 1, will be. rest of the entries will be 0. So, now we have converted, uh, we, have, we have converted the input, all the input words into the numbers as well as the, um, and the size of both the, all the input vectors is same and all the target vector is same. So, we have pre-processed the data. So, uh, now, Number of stage, number of or number of times or number of layers is depend on the maximum length of the maximum length of the sentence. So if the maximum length of the sentence is 10, so we are giving we are, we are having the 10 uh, in 10 stages. The difference is now we uh, the input is same. The input the input is 24. The length of the input vector is 24. Now we are we are we are uh, we are interested to get the output at the each layers. So the length of the output vector is ten. That we have already converted this. So okay. So now we have we have converted this uh, is a input uh, input vector and this is our output vectors. Let's see the models. So this is uh, your your model for the sequence classifications where we have one output at the end of the layer. So uh, the input of this layer is, is given to the sigmoid, sigmoid function and then uh, sigmoid function and, the, and we, are inter, we are applying the softmax layer at the output layer and get the output. Now, but in the case of sequence labeling, we are, we are interested to find, get the output at each layer. Okay. So, the, so we, we find the S1 and S2. Here, as I told you in the last video also, the weight between the input layer and header layer is represented by U. The weight between the uh, hidden layer and output layer is represented by V. So here, we have N number of W, but only one V. In this case, we have, because this, is a, this weight is represented by U and this weight is represented by so the math formula for calculating calculating the output of S1 is same. Input uh, matrix is multiplied by the weight U. Tick. Then W multiply by the previous stage, add Ys and pass it to the sigmoid activation function. 
or the any other uh, sigmoid activation function, railway activation function and so on. And then output of hidden layer is passed to the Y1, is passed to this layer, so which is represented by the S, S multiplied by out uh, by the uh, input uh, by the weight matrix B at the YSC and, and passing to the um, soft match activation functions this give the probability for the for each class. So, what the difference the major difference is we are here we have only single output I mean here we have a multiple outputs so this is a main, main difference ok. Now, calculate the loss functions. So, in the loss functions in this uh, in the case of sequence classification we are calculating the loss function at the end of the stage. So, the which is calculated by the uh, by the cross entropy loss which is given by this formula here only one entry is 1 and 1 and the rest of the entry is 0. So, 1 is multiplied by uh, this is um, 1 is multiplied by log of 0 7. So, this is your loss function and we are calculating the average loss functions which is divided where the m is the number of your entries. So, this is a loss function for sequence classification that we have already discussed in detail in the last class. Now, the loss functions for the uh, for the sequence labeling is also given by the same formula that is entropy loss, but the difference is here we are calculating the loss function here at this layer, at this layer, at this layer, at this layer and this layer and then taking the average of all losses. So, the j j uh, j equals to 1 to t where is the t is the time step time step 1 time step 2 the loss as time step 1 the loss is time step 2 the loss uh, is time step 3 and so on and m is a number uh, number of training examples. So, this is this formula gives the average loss of the model. Now, uh, we can see here we are we are having the n number of classes okay. and the uh, this is uh, this is your 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 output which is given by the models okay. so here the formula is the formula is same one is multiplied by 0 0.0.2 and uh, and uh, 0 and the, then the rest of the term is uh, term is 0 okay. the next model is learning algorithm so, the learning algorithm is same because the parameter is same we are interested to find the weight w, uh, weight matrix u, weight matrix b, ys v and ys c. So, the uh, so the learning algorithm is the gradient descent algorithm which is same in both the cases here the equation equation is given by w of new equals to w old old minus eta times of delta w. Okay, where eta is a where, where is a eta is a learning le, learning rates. So uh, now the the main difference as we have seen in to calculate the loss function, we are calculating the partial derivations with respect to uh, with respect uh, with respect to W and V in terms of, uh, in the case of uh, deep neural network. We have already discussed in details. Now here we have a number of parameters u, v, w, y s v and y s c. So, in order to calculate the, uh, the loss functions, we need to calculate the uh, loss function with respect to u, with respect to v, with respect to w, with respect to y s v and with respect to c. Okay. Since the input is directly input is directly connected to your hidden layers. So, we can easily calculate the uh, partial derivation with respect to u and with respect to v, but there is a challenge to calculate the partial derivation with respect to w. The reason is if, if I calculate the, uh, the loss at this layer, so the loss of the layer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is depend on is loss on this layer loss in this layer, loss in this layer and loss in this layer. So, if we have a n layer, if we are interested to find the loss at the n layer, it depends on the loss and the previous n minus layers. Okay. So, the, so, we need to uh, we need to find the partial derivation 
of your loss function with respect to w is is more challenging now suppose that we are interested to find the uh, the uh, the loss function at this layer so now how to calculate the loss function of this layer so the loss function of this layer is given by suppose the uh, this is a 0 1 2 3 and 4 so the loss function is is, is given at the stage 4 is given by the loss function the loss theta where the where the l theta l4 theta is given by is given by this equations <coughs> so loss at the uh, at the layer 4 is is depends on s4 stage 4 and w so we take the partial derivation with respect to l with respect to s4 and then s4 is dependent on w so with respect to w so this is your partial derivation of uh, uh, this is your loss function at layer 4 now s4 is dependent on the s3 which is which is the again dependent on s2 and again de dependent on s4 so the loss function so that this terms s4 the loss function of at the layer s4 with respect to w is dependent on s4 is dependent on w so as partial derivation of s4 with respect to w now the s4 is also dependent on s3 which is dependent on s w which is w so the partial derivation of s4 with respect to partial derivation of s3 and then the partial derivation because s3 is dependent uh, is dependent on w so the um, so the uh, depend so the loss divided by w now the s3 is depend now the s4 is dependent on the on s2 with respect to w so the so s4 is dependent on s3 so we first we need to take the partial derivation of s4 with respect to uh, s3 then s3 with respect to s s2 and then s2 with respect to w now again s it depend on dependent on the s1 so the uh, s4 is uh, s4 is dependent on s3 s3 is dependent on s2 or s3 is dependent on s1 and s1 dependent on s4 so this is your your uh, loss uh, at the layer s4 with respect to w now this equation uh, now we have multiply multiply the uh, delta s4 and so uh, this can on uh, this can also be written as a this as this equations to make similarity then then this equation is converted in this i equals to 1 to 4 where uh, where uh, where s4 where where the value of k k equals to 1 to 4 so now this equation can be represented at in this terms for the for the t terms now the uh, in a common for the for the t terms this uh, the four is replaced by t so the uh, the the partial derivation with this at the layer t or the time step t with respect to w is given by this equations so this is known as the back propagation with time now the evaluations so in terms of uh, in terms of sequence classifications we are interested to find the accuracy which is because uh, that we are we have calculated at the end of the layers <coughs> at the end, uh, so uh, as we have discussed uh, how to calculate the accuracy uh, at the uh, at the end of the layers if the uh, if <coughs> if the uh, maximum uh, uh, if the um, for the sentence if the accuracy uh, if your model is predict Eight time accurately, then the accuracy is given by uh, uh, eight divided by ten, that is point eight. So this is a this is a uh, accuracy. This is evaluation parameters for the sequence classifications. Now, in the case of sequence labeling, we can we we can calculate the overall accuracy, accuracy per class, and confusion matrix. So there, so we can use a three matrix, a three evaluation parameters to evaluate the models. In the terms of overall accuracy, so overall accuracy is 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 given by the calculate the accuracy at this layer this layer this layer this layer and this layers and divided by and and uh, calculate the sums so this is a, your overall accuracy in terms of accuracy per class we are if we are having 10 class so 
what uh, what is the accuracy for the cl class pronoun what is the accuracy for the class verb what is the accuracy for the class articles what is the accuracy for the adjective so this is known as the accuracy per class is called that means pronoun yadi koi sentence pronoun tha to kitni bar usne sirf sentence ko pronoun bola aur kitni bar usne usko wrong predict kiya so this is accuracy for the uh, pronoun class same yadi aapka yadi aapka word verb tha तो कितनी बार उसने उसको वर्ड को वर्ब बोला और कितनी बार उसने उसको रॉन्गली प्रिडिक्ट किया सो दिस इज एक्यूरेसी फॉर दी फॉर दी वर्ब ओवरऑल एक्यूरेसी की हम बात करें तो ओवरऑल एक्यूरेसी में हम कैसे कैलकुलेट करेंगे कि भाई टोटल टोटल सबकी जो एक्यूरेसी है देन वी विल एड ऑल द एक्यूरेसी और हम उसका एवरेज निकाल देंगे कन्फ्यूजन मैट्रिक्स दैट यू ऑलरेडी नो कन्फ्यूजन मैट्रिक्स इज अगेन अगेन एम क्रॉस एम एम क्रॉस एम मैट्रिक्स सो दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन द्लास्ट क्लासेस Now these are the references. Thank you very much.